If you want to build a stronger core and bulletproof your lower back, I've got you covered in this week's video. Hey friends, I'm at my home gym this week. They're doing construction at IFAST, so we are going to talk quick, dirty, and easy core training tips. I got 10 tips on the board for you here today. It's going to help you really dial in your core training activities and make sure you're getting the most out of them. So let's stop jibber jabbering and let's dive in and talk core training. All right, our first core training tip is reaching and being active with your reach when you're doing a wall press ab activity. So here's what I mean by that. A lot of times when people set up for this activity, they think they just kind of like use the, the wall for support. Instead, what I want you to do is actively think about bring your elbows in and then actively reach through the wall. It should feel like everything on the back side of your body lengthens out. So I'm reaching, my elbows are up and in, and then I'm trying to extend my leg out without letting my back arch. I guarantee if you do this one subtle change, it's gonna make a huge impact on how this exercise feels. Okay, our second core training tip revolves around our leg lowering exercise. Now, I love this activity. It's great for getting the core strong, unlocking some mobility in the calves, in the hip flexors. But one of the most important things you can do here is make sure your setup is locked in. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this band, wrap it over my midfoot, and then when I lay back, I wanna make sure before I ever start, I'm flexing my quads and I'm pulling my toes back towards my face. I should get a nice stretch behind my knee. So once I'm set up on this leg, I'm gonna try and do the exact same thing here. So now I'm thinking about flexing this quad, pulling my toes back, and then keeping my back flat as I lower my leg down towards the ground. So very important that whole time, think about flexing your quad, pulling your toes back, and just locking in both legs to really cinch in that ab development. Our third core training tip is to exhale fully. And this is universal. This would work on almost any core training exercise. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna set up on my back. And once I'm here, I'm just gonna give a little reach, inhale, and then I'm gonna work on exhaling fully. When I do that, it allows my lower back to relax, it allows my abs to engage, and it's gonna help me set the best possible position. So whether I'm just hanging out here breathing, or I'm taking this up into something like a dead bug or a PNF, once I exhale fully, I've got my abs locked in and I'm gonna make sure I'm getting the most out of the exercise. Core training tip number four is all about the plank. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, Mike, I've done planks forever. I know how to do planks. But the way I see most people set up for planks, they've got their hands together, they're turtled over, they're not getting the most out of the exercise. So what I want you to do instead of hands together, I want your hands apart. I want you actively pushing through your elbows, through your hands, and trying to create a space in between your shoulder blades. So instead of this kind of posture, which is where most people start, I want you more here. So I'm actively pushing through my elbows, keeping my chest up, and I'm trying to create a space in between my shoulder blades. The second I do this, I can definitely feel more abs and I know I'm getting more out of the exercise. Number five revolves around the bear. So the bear is kind of like the plank in the sense that it's a reaching core activity, but the way most people do it, and I honestly did this wrong for a while as well, when you're set up, instead of keeping the chest and the eyes up, you're just kind of rounding into this position, and that's not where we want to be. Again, we don't want to be pulled over getting this really like rectus abdominis focused ab strategy. So what I want you to do instead, we are going to reach long. We're going to have your chest up. We're going to have your eyes up. And then we're just gonna pick our knees up like an inch off the ground. Again, thinking about reaching long, trying to create a space in between our shoulder blades, and then gently tucking the hips and the pelvis to really lock in our abs. Tip number six revolves around the PNF exercise. Now, a lot of times when people do PNF exercise, they think about, hey, can I just get my hands to the ground? And they're not getting the most out of the exercise. So instead of just trying to get your hands to the ground, I want you to think about getting your hands long, trying to get your hands as far apart as possible. So it'll look like this. Once you're set up on the ground, you're gonna reach really long. Inhale, exhale, find your abs, allow your lower back to melt into the ground. And then, again, instead of just trying to get your hands on the ground, which would be very easy, I want you to think about making your arms long and trying to get your hands as far apart as possible. When you do this, you're really gonna feel your abs work, but you're also gonna feel all those muscles in between your shoulder blades engage as well. 
Our seventh tip is all about the ab wheel. Now, just like on our bear or on our plank, we don't wanna be turtled up. We wanna have good posture. We wanna maintain our stack between our rib cage and our pelvis. So when we set up, we wanna make sure we keep the chest up and out. We want the core slightly engaged, maybe just a little bit of a tuck through the pelvis and the abs. And then we're trying to keep that chest up and out as we come out. Gentle note, make sure you have an Airex pad or a towel underneath. This is not the best thing for your knees, but if you keep the chest up and out, you're definitely gonna feel more obliques and you're gonna get more core involvement. Core training tip number eight involves reaching on your dead bug. So when we do a dead bug, very important that we get the reach right off the start. If we're just kind of in this posture, it's very easy for our rib cage to come forward. We don't get our abs involved the way we'd like. So I will get a good active reach first. If yourself, your client, your athlete isn't feeling it, grab a small weight plate. It's just gonna give you a little bit of external feedback. So you get that good position, inhale, exhale reach cinch that back position in and then make sure you're holding that reach throughout it's going to help keep everything back and it's going to make sure that you feel more abs number nine be smooth in your rock and roll now a lot of people don't think of a rock and roll as an ab exercise but this is absolutely how i sell it to my athletes because it doesn't look all that hard maybe even feel silly the first time they do it but i guarantee they're going to feel better it's going to unlock their mobility and if you're doing it right you're going to feel more abs so when you do your rock and roll take your hands place them behind your thighs if you can and then once we're here we want to try and be as smooth as we can rolling front to back you're going to see a lot of people when they first start doing it it's going to be really like clunky throughout you want to try and make it as smooth as you can rolling front to back so ultimately the goal here is to be as smooth and fluid as possible so you relax the lower back and you engage the abs maximally. Our final tip is don't skip your ab exercises. Now, I know this sounds silly, but I'm reminded back in the day, we'd be powerlifting and we'd be crushing heavy squats, heavy deads, bench presses. You go through all your assistance work and then you're like, deuces, I'll hit my abs at home, which is code for I'm never gonna do my abs. So make sure you get your ab work in. If you don't, one of the little tips that I've employed over the years is I move it to the front of your workout, which really sucks because now every exercise you do after is way harder. So that is tip number 10. Don't skip your ab and core training. All right, friends, rapid fire. That was 10 tips to help you get more out of your core training. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go here right now. It's my core training playlist and it's gonna take you step-by-step step through some of my favorite core training exercises.